All right, 310 and a half yardage. We'll see how, I, I say about a couple hours before we get a power trial. We check this right here, let's take a look. Yeah, that's still pretty soft, but I can, you can tell it's firming up underneath there a little bit. But I would say on a day like today, it's probably 55-ish right now. A little bit of sun, a little bit of clouds, so I'm gonna say a couple hours. About nine o'clock, let's say around 11 o'clock, we'll come back, check it, and uh, see where we're at. All right, so here we are at 10 o'clock, about an hour after I last got off with you. We're checking things. Let's check this down here again. All right, so I can barely push in an eighth of an inch. So that's setting up really, really good. That's pretty close to being ready. Probably still got another, I don't know, 20 minutes or so before we got to get on that. But let's go check our entryway. The guys are over there cutting the doors down for the garage. We always let that firm up. Still a little soft, but it's good enough so I can get my edges cut in with my edger. All right, hi everybody. I just wanted to show you, you know, a typical day in the life of us finishing concrete. This is a pretty typical job for us. You know, we'll do a house, a garage, an entryway, a patio. And, you know, we'll have to hang out, obviously, after the pour and, and get it finished. So, a lot of times we're power trialing stuff. You know, this one's going to have a broom finish on the front here. And I just wanted to show you kind of what that's like. And obviously it's a little different depending on where you live and your temperatures and, you know, your concrete mixes and all that stuff. But all in all, finishing concrete is pretty similar. You know, it, it, it cures up, it starts to harden. It's a timing thing. And, you know, the better, the better you know about the timing, the easier it is for finishing. So... The guy, when I started finishing concrete, pouring and finishing concrete, I was around 15, 16 years old. And, you know, the guy I worked for, when he was teaching me, he's like, Mike, when you're finishing concrete, it's always better to be a little early than a little late. So, and I've always lived by that rule, you know, if, if there's something to do, and as far as finishing goes, whether it's just magging out some edges like I'm doing right now, you know, Darren and Luca doing that up in the background and just getting some edges a little bit smoother, then that's what we do. We're just not going to go sit in the truck and wait for the perfect time to finish. We'll, uh, you know, we'll just keep working the concrete a little bit here and there. And if it's going to make our job a little bit easier, whether it's 30 minutes from now or a half hour from now, then we'll just get it done. And that's, that's what finishing and working with Darren and Luke's really cool about like yeah, I know I'm I'm their boss right but I don't even need to tell them what to do they just they know that stuff's got to be done so they just go out and do it like Luke right here getting out on the floor a little bit early going around all his all his plumbing pipes and whatever's out there on the floor I mean he he could wait until he gets on there with the power trial and just do it then but it just makes it a little bit easier to do it in advance you know so Darren's over here working on the garage doors getting them sloped the way he wants them and putting the edger on them and what i'm doing right now is i'm just cutting a groove in or a joint in across this this three foot door typically the concrete will want to crack diagonally off one of those corners right there so we try to put some type of a joint there whether we cut it in early with a joiner like this or maybe we'll saw it in after the floor is hardened but we always like to put a cut somewhere right there on that door on those inside corners uh, and then you'll see how we saw the floor later on in the video towards the end. We saw cut joints in it too, but just staying ahead of the game. That's all. That's what finishing's all about. We're going to get a power trial off here if, right here in a minute. I'm going to show you how we do that. I did see, I saw that too, Mike. You did? Just about ready. 
You can see where he's walking on it. He's barely sinking. Still sinking a tiny bit. Might give that just a couple minutes. I don't know. What are you going to do, Darren? Hit it now or try it? He's going to give it a few more minutes just because it's chilly. It's not really that hot today. We'll go drop this one in the garage. So what Luke's doing is he's just he's just bringing the power trial down to where the second load is and just checking that. Sometimes the second load will actually dry or cure up harder than the first load. It's not always not always the first load cures up first. So he's just double checking that, make sure that's not getting too hard down there. And if he feels like it's he can have a, you know he's got some time on it, he'll go back to the first load like he's doing and he'll get that first load floated up and then. You know, me and Darren are going to go around Buzz's edges with the steel trials now that we've already got a mag floated. Get around all the pipes, all the plumbing, whatever else is in the, in the floor there. We'll trial around all them, get them nice and smooth. And that's just, you know, part of the finishing process right there. You can see Luke, he's kind of just waiting. He's not, he's definitely not behind. So he's just giving it a couple more minutes there. And in the meantime, I'm getting on the little boom finish thing out front. I've already mag floated it out once so and I let it cure up pretty good so I'm just mag floating it out again we don't usually like steel trial stuff that's broom finished here in Maine because our concrete has air entrainment in it and we don't want to trap any air in the surface by sealing off the surface with a steel trial so we'll just you know we'll mag float it out a couple times the mag float seems to leave the surface a little more open and it won't trap air and cause like a little blister later on and we'll just mag float that out until it's really good and firm and we feel like it's ready you know to drag the broom across and then we'll just drag the broom across like I'm gonna do right now now if I if I broom that and I don't like the texture if I feel like it's too uh, too rough I can give it another 15 20 minutes and then broom it but if I'm happy with it the way it is, then I'll just broom it and get it done. And then that part will be done for the day. I mean, I'll, I'll get the broom finish on that. I'll put the edges around it. And then we won't have to worry about that part. That'll be all done. You know, on exterior broom finishes here in Maine, we don't want them, we don't want them too, too smooth as far as broom finish goes. But we also don't want them rough. So there's a little bit of a fine line there as to what you like and what you don't like. And everybody's a little bit different. This is just how we do it right here. All right, it's 10.45 a.m. right now. Got our little entryway all broom finished and edge, so that's done. Luke's first floating the house floor. Haven't quite got on the garage yet, but that's close. Darren's gonna be getting on that here shortly. Luke's gonna finish floating this, and he might go right back. He might go right back to where he started and hit that again, but just keep an eye on here so it's actually setting up pretty good today it's probably the sun's coming up it's getting warm now I just had to take a sweatshirt off I don't know it feels like it might be 55 60 ish in the Sun it does feel pretty warm we're using combo blades on that MBW the guys been liking the combo blades so they can just float it then go right into finishing without having to change any type of blades just a little faster for them you do wear through them pretty quick though you get a couple floors out of them and you got to put new ones on Uh, looks like Darren's going to try it. He's stepping on it. Not really sinking in at all. Just a lot of this has been in the shade for a while. So you don't definitely don't have to get on it too early. He's going to try it out. If it's too early, he'll just stop.
All right, the process just keeps going. I mean, he's probably, Luke's been off that for 20 minutes maybe. Checking it, hitting some edges. Probably about ready to go here out in the sun. It's feeling good and warm now out in the sun. See what time it is, it is 11.05. So as he's trialing that, each hit, you know, he might, he might crank those blades up pitch on them just a little bit more as the concrete's tearing up and drying up on the surface and then that's you know, slowly each hit it gets a little bit smoother than the hit before same with doing the edges each hit each hit the edges get smoother and smoother until they're just done you know, like we've magged them and trialed them once probably trial them again we might have to do them one more time as far as the edges as far as that right there, like that's his second time he's hit it. Probably two, maybe three more times and that's gonna be done and what we call shined out. Right now the edges, the edges are getting really smooth now. I might only have to do them. I only have to do the edges one more time. Remember, this is just a, this is just a floor. They're gonna put something over it. I don't know if they're putting carpet, tile, wood, something. So the concrete floor isn't the finished floor. All right, 11:30 now. Luke's gonna hit it again. Darren's jumping on his over there. He's gonna hit that. Go help him do some edges over there. Probably the hardest part about power trial and something like this is just learning the timing. You know, the timing's a little different every day depending on the temperature, the sun, the wind, how cold it is, all that stuff. At the actual operating the power trial, like like that's not too bad. That's pretty easy. You know, you push down on the handles to go one way, you lift up on them a little bit to go the other way, and that thing just kind of glides over the surface takes a little bit of getting used to there's a little learning curve to it but once you learn how to run the power trial that part's not not too bad it's just a matter of you know you, you can't really get on this stuff too late if you wait and let that surface dry up too much then the blades won't work it up underneath and it'll leave it looking rough right now the blades are working up the pace from the previous time he hit it and they're just making it a little bit smoother so if you wait too long and that gets hard then you're not going to be able to work that pace step and you're just going to be going over basically like a hard surface and it's going to leave it kind of rough looking if you can work up the pace a little bit then it smooths it out each time each time the roughness if you want to call it that gets a little bit smoother and smoother and smoother kind of watch darren here for a second and then you know the pattern you run in we run it in a pattern. That helps flatten the floor a little bit, flatten the surface a little bit. Each time we hit it, we cross that pattern. You can see under the blades how he's kind of working up the pace. That's, I mean, if, if he wasn't, then you wouldn't be able to see his pattern change. You still see the pattern from the previous hit. Garage, I can tell by looking at it just a little bit not quite as smooth as the house he's on Darren's on finishing the third truck Luke's on the second truck over there 
there was a few minutes there was a few minutes in between each one that one's setting up pretty good over there the first truck the first truck setting up good too but Luke's probably got a couple more hits with the power trial on that and then that is gonna be done it's getting pretty smooth now All right, 1148. Just got done hitting hitting both floors. Gonna let them cure up, dry up a little bit more on the top. Darren took that out. Sometimes the sometimes the paste and the fibers stick to that bottom ring and they kind of just fall off as you're trialing. And then you gotta kind of grind them in, and that's a pain. So he's just pulled that trial off and cleaning that ring up a little bit before he puts it back on. So be back in a few minutes. All right, it's 1215. I'm gonna go up there and hit some of these pipes edges. Probably be the last time we hit these. Blades up a little higher now. It's pretty hot on top. That just kind of burns off the fuzz. That finish right there, I mean, that's basically done. It's really smooth. The, the blades themselves, they're throwing up a little bit of those little tiny little concrete balls. Like, those would literally just blow off with a leaf blower. But Luke could probably just let that those dry out and buzz over it one more time, and those will go right away. But as far as the smoothness, well, it's not really going to get any smoother. It's kind of starting to black out right there. Let's go check out the garage. Looks like your garage is starting to shine out there in front of the doors. That's almost done. He's probably going to hit it one more time after this, but that's that's getting that down to be where it's really, really smooth. Garage is almost done. House, house is almost done. Sometimes, you know, if it does dry up on you a little bit, you can sprinkle just a little water on there like we was doing. It works up a little bit of paste on the surface. You just don't want to overdo it because you'll, you'll weaken the surface, but a little bit won't hurt. 
the Dell loops over here shining this out. You can see how smooth that's getting over here. We'll be saw cutting that here shortly, I can tell. Once the, once the concrete floor gets this hard, I mean, you're not really going to level it or flatten it anymore with the power trial. You could pretty much go in any pattern you want. We, we still typically use a pattern, like you can see Luke's going in pattern this way, which was opposite of the way he went last time. Same with Darren, I mean, he's still doing the same pattern. It's just, that's typically the way uh, power trial works. I mean, lift up on the handles goes one way you push down on the handles it goes another way so you lift up to go left push down it goes right rather than just do like circles out there or just some random pattern we still typically do the same pattern until we're done All right, now what we'll do is we'll lay out the saw cuts. Whatever buzz, I can see a couple little tiny fuzzy spots. He's probably going to just buzz them one more time. Then we'll snap our chalk lines and get sawing. The saw cuts, I mean, in a house like this, where it's all getting covered with something, like we'll go off that, that corner right there. We call that a re-entrant corner. That's a corner that sticks into the floor. We'll try to saw off that both ways if we can. That's going to want to crack right there for sure. And then we'll break this up one down the middle the long way we'll try to avoid those pipes if we can so it might not be exactly in the middle and just you know sorry give it a place to crack hopefully prevent any just random shrinkage cracks Let's check the time. Let's see. Uh, one o'clock right on the money right now. Luke's getting the house sawed. Darren's just finishing up, burning off any little bit of fuzz in the garage. Most of it's pretty much done. Now we're just going to pick that trial up. Get it off the floor, get it cleaned up, start loading things. I got the garage all laid out. We'll snap chalk lines in the garage. Change blade on the machine. Yeah. Thank you. That one? Yeah.
All right, 116, that's a wrap. We're going to head out. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one.